Today I'm gonna to show you start to finish how to do a composting method that you may have never heard of before. So, what is Bokashi composting? What's in this bag? How exactly do you do it and why is it so important? That is what we're covering today's video from A to Z. The first of which of course is, what is it? Bokashi means, loosely translated, it's a Japanese word that means fading away. So what we're doing is we're taking food scraps and we're mixing them with what is inside this magical little satchel here and slowly, the bacteria and the microbes that are in here on this spent beer grain are going to be working away. They're going to start to ferment those food scraps and pre-digest them so that we can then use those food scraps in our compost, in our worm bins, or my personal favorite, in our actual garden straight away without having to go through the classical composting system and just getting a lot of nutrition to our soil for those microbes to break down in the soil and then, of course, to make available for our plants. So let's take a look at what's inside here and let's get to it. So we've got our Bokashi grains in our burlap bag and this biodegradable little inner, which is nice, but what we're looking at here is spent beer grains. These are coming from one of the only organic breweries here in San Diego. So this is a waste stream that SD Microbes has taken and they're basically saying, okay, let's use this and we're going to inoculate it with lactobacillus, which is our microbe that's gonna start going to work on our food scraps. So this is what we're working with. This is sort of the base ingredient in Bokashi composting that you absolutely have to have. And I very much prefer this particular one because not only is it local to me, but I just find it to be a very effective and fast active worker. Now that we have a rough idea of what's going on with Bokashi composting, why would you use it over worm composting, hot composting, even just static cold composting? Well, one of the most important reasons is that you can compost things that almost none of those systems can compost. Fats, meats, cheeses, cooked leftovers, things like this that normally would not go into definitely a hot compost bin and almost always a worm composting bin, Bokashi will process. The second reason you would do this is because if you're not a worm composter or a composter, then it makes highly efficient use of your food scraps, not only from just a waste perspective, it's not going into the landfill where it becomes anaerobic and it's just completely wasted, but it is a quicker process because of that pre-fermentation that you're gonna see later in this video. Reason number three is going to be increasing the organic carbon content of your soil once you actually put the food scraps that have been through the Bokashi system into your garden. It's going to increase the level of humus in the soil, the soil life's going to explode, you're just giving it what it needs. It's similar to putting in other types of amendments, but I find it can work quite a bit faster. Finally, our fourth reason, there are some anti-pathogenic properties to Bokashi compost just due to the nature of the processing. It does become somewhat acidic, etc. So if that's a concern to you, then it's a really good method to use. Our next step in the Bokashi process is actually building the system that is going to house all of our Bokashi compost. It's so easy. Here's exactly what you need. You need one five gallon bucket, just as is, you need another five gallon bucket that you've drilled some holes in the bottom of. You then need one lid because Bokashi, unlike other composting methods, is anaerobic without oxygen. So you need to have a lid on the top of this bucket right here. The next thing you're gonna need is some kind of old t-shirt or cloth or rag because we want to line the bottom of the one with holes in it just so there's not any super leakage, just the water comes out or the liquid. Then you need some kind of prop up because what you'll do is you'll probably put this brick one in here and then you'll put this on top and it gives it a little bit of a buffer just because you don't want the liquid to be sitting in the actual bottom of the top container if that makes any sense. Then finally, and this is somewhat optional, I like to put something on the top of my scraps once we fill it up. So I have one of these old five gallon bucket inserts but you could again just use Another thing like this, you could use wax paper, anything to give it that anaerobic seal. That's all you need to start your Bokashi bucket. Now let's put it together. Step number one, put the bucket down that has no holes in it. Step two, place the brick or whatever you're using to prop the other bucket up inside. Step three, place your other bucket right on top. Step four, cut out a circular section of your t-shirt or cloth or whatever you're using to put at the bottom as your solid waste filter. Now 
replace that filter in the bottom. This is to prevent any solid waste from going through the holes as well as to provide even a little bit more of an air barrier. It really is that easy guys. These last two steps come after we filled our Mokashi bucket, which is what we're getting to right now. So here we have quite the assortment of food scraps and food waste. There's some extra things that I had around the house. I've got some coffee grounds. I have some spent potatoes. These are potatoes that I grew that weren't quite up to snuff and they unfortunately have now gone a little bit bad. I have some dragon fruit pieces and these are all going to go into our Bokashi composting system. There's two things we have to remember. The only two things you cannot put into a Bokashi composting system are items that are just simply too large. Like this is too big. You wanna just chop it up a little bit and items that are already going rotten or moldy because the microorganisms and pathogens that are in that mold, that, that rot, can actually outcompete what's on the Bokashi grains that we've so lovingly sprinkled into our system. So don't put those two in, everything else you can. Let's go ahead and break some of these down and then we'll get into how to layer your Bokashi bucket. What we need to do is first layer down a nice healthy dose of Bokashi bran on the bottom as a nice little barricade and also to kickstart the process. So I'm pretty generous with this. I'm just putting about a cup or so on there. And now we need to layer our scraps. So here, I don't want to go overboard. I want to layer maybe like an inch or two. And then from there, I'm going to recoat with some more Bokashi bran. So let's put in just a little bit more. That should be good. And now we're coming back in with our Bokashi brand. This helps to fill up the air pockets, but it also helps to inoculate everything and get that lactobacillus really acting as quickly as possible. Also soaks up a little bit of moisture. Okay, now that we are on our final batch, this is as much as I have to put in right now, I'm gonna really quickly just compress this down because we want it to be as airtight as possible. So I'm just gonna get as much air as I can out. And we're gonna layer it with a very healthy dose of Bokashi bran on the top because this is our final sort of capping off process. So I'm gonna give it two cups of bran on top. Just be a little liberal about it, no big deal. And then I'm going to put on my little liner, which of course you could use parchment paper or something like that. I just decided to use the five gallon bucket liner that I had from a previous video I did on a self-watering container. So we're gonna do this like just like that. Now you have to put on your airtight container lid because again, it's an anaerobic process, so snap that tight. There we go. It's been a little over a week since we started our Bokashi bin, so let's go ahead and crack it open and see what's inside. Oh wow, I can already smell the fermentation for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have a lot of this white mold, which is actually completely fine. That's kind of what we're looking for. You can see some potatoes right there, some bran. Looks completely normal, looks as it should. I'm curious if there's any liquid down below. It's hard to tell just from looking, but there's only the tiniest little bit of moisture, which is another good sign. You don't want a ton of it. So we're looking really good. We've got another week to wait, so we'll be back in a week. We're at the two week mark, guys. Let's peel it back. Ooh, take a look. I did add a couple more things here at the top, so it probably is not gonna look that different, but we're about ready to get it into the garden. Just so you can see, there is actually some liquid now that we've waited another week, so we can discuss what to do with this as well. So the first thing we have to do is actually dig about 10 to 12 inch deep trenches. I'm gonna dig two, one down right here, and one down right here, and then after we layer our Bokashi in, we don't want to put, especially young plants, directly in because you can burn them. So we're going to give it probably another week or so and then come back and check. But let's go ahead and get our Bokashi in the ground.
fully buried. So the only other thing I'm gonna do, which I feel to be necessary in my area, I have a lot of skunks that come through and they're gonna smell those scraps. So I'm just going to put some frost blanket over the top of this raised bed and that should protect it. I noticed they don't really wanna climb in if I do that. So we're just gonna put some clips on and now we have to wait another week. And by the way, if you like these raised beds, guys, they're called Birdie's Garden Beds, and I actually sell them on my online store, which you can go check out in the description below. It's been about two weeks since we buried our Bokashi food scraps into my raised bed. We've had a couple rainy days here in San Diego, more than a couple actually, which is really unusual. I'm unsure how that would have impacted how quickly the bacteria and soil life could have broken down what's inside. So we may have food scraps still, we may not. Only one way to find out. Let's go ahead and get digging. So this was our trench. So I'm gonna go straight down in here and see what we've got. And honestly, right away, I'm not really getting anything. Let's keep going though. Do we have any food scraps in here? Ugh. Yeah, it looks like we have some for sure. Look, there's definitely some food scraps right there. They're a little rotted or a little moist, but they're there. They're just not as prevalent as they once were because we put in over five pounds worth. I actually also see a lot of worm life going on. Look at that. This bed was more or less devoid of worms when we first started. And we've got one nice guy right here amongst many others that are down in this trench working away at this food. Let's just keep digging over here, see if we can get anything out of this section. Okay, that's about as deep as we were. And look, we do have some scraps. They're still there, but they are massively broken down already. Uh, like there's just a lot of decomposition going on. You could see that the soil life was really starting to take effect. And honestly, I would give it maybe another week. We probably won't even see these here in the soil, which means that more or less those nutrients have been become bioavailable to most of the soil life. And thus we have supercharged our soil with a bit more organic matter, which is exactly what we were trying to do in a manner much faster than composting. So there we have it guys, Bokashi Composting 101. In this video, we've taken you all the way from setup, explaining what it is, all the way to processing food and actually getting it into our raised beds and getting that soil life to really start to break it down. This process took about three and a half to four weeks. That's faster than most composting processes you're going to run into, and that's all due to the Bokashi brand. Like I said, I get my Bokashi brand from SD Microbes. They're good friends of mine. They put together a pretty crazy deal where you can get a percentage off by using a code as well as free nationwide shipping for this. It's Bokashi brand. It's enough to last you many, many batches. You're gonna get it in this burlap sack as well as a biodegradable compostable container here. And then you just have beautiful, beautiful brand that you can feel good about because it's even being repurposed. I mean, this is spent beer grain. In fact, they call their Bokashi Beer Kashi. So if you'd like to get into the Bokashi composting game, I can highly recommend them. It's actually pretty funny. In this Bokashi mixture, one of my good friend's farms actually is contributing to some of the input. Steven over at Nature's Always Right. You might, guys may have seen some videos I've done with him in the past. So anyways, if you'd like to check it out, go ahead and do so. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.